Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. So Mike Todd, the pastor of Transformation Church in Oklahoma, made headlines recently for his, let's say, controversial Easter service. But today we're going to be assessing some teaching that came from about a month or so before his Easter service. And we're just going to listen to the things that he is teaching and we're going to compare what he is saying to the word of God. But first, if you'd like to help promote Christian content here on YouTube and get this out to more people on the internet, if you would please take a second to subscribe to my channel, I greatly appreciate it. Okay, friends, I want to tell you up front that a number of the things that we are going to hear from Mike Todd today are good. He is going to say a number of things that are correct, and he actually does a really great job of passionately calling people to things. But at the same time, uh, we're going to see him make some pretty significant blunders that I think undo a lot of the good work that he had initially done in the first place. So let's put our discerning caps on. Let's listen intently, and uh, hopefully you will be able to discern between the good things that he is teaching and where he is going into error. With that, let's jump into our first clip. My natural response, everybody know this scripture, even thugs know this scripture, an eye for an eye. <laughs> hey, cub, pull up on me or pull up on you. Hey, cub, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then we hit him with the Tupac line, only God can judge me. That's Because the truth of the matter is we, we want to serve from a place of insecurity, our own selfish desire. But when you serve the kingdom, you have to sacrifice all that. It's not that you don't have it. You just can't act on it. Okay. Serving the kingdom is going to cost you your natural response. Man. Man. My wife made me mad. So I want to go talk to the girl at my job. My natural response is you treat me like that, I'm gonna go do something that makes me feel better. In the kingdom, you have to put that response. It's okay to feel it. Nobody has ever gotten in trouble for feeling it. Oh God, oh God, I know this is too much. You, everybody say, I can feel it. I can't act on it. I'm okay for you to feel horny. Oh my God. Want to cheat on your wife? Want to cheat on your husband? Feel like leaving them nappy headed kids to make they, I'm moving the whole wife. Feel it. Look up flights, $600, I'll be out of here tomorrow. I will be out of here. Everybody say, feel it. God wouldn't have given you feelings if he didn't expect you to feel it. But in the kingdom, we have to put our feelings through a filter. Okay, guys, so let me start with what I am thankful for from that last clip. And I want to do this because I think that sometimes people might think uh, when someone like myself is doing discernment work or we're speaking out against a particular pastor or their teachings, that we're doing so because we think that nothing they say is correct whatsoever. And friends, that is not the case. Mike Todd said a number of things that were correct there. Now, I do, again, believe very much the message was tainted as a whole, but I absolutely will commend him for the things that he said that were correct. So I do appreciate the fact that he was telling people that you can't always act upon your natural response. So you might have a desire, you might get angry and you want to punch somebody, but you can't act upon it. Or you might want to cheat on your spouse, but you can't act upon it. So I, I appreciate that he is telling people don't act upon those natural impulses. And later in his sermon, he's even going to tell people, listen, you have to submit those things to God. And so that is really good. And so if you like Mike Todd, you might say, so why do you have a problem with this teaching? He's telling people not to act upon their sin. Well, friends, where it gets really horrifically tainted, I mean, problematically so, this is a huge problem, is when he says that it is okay to feel those things in the first place. And he, he said, it is okay to feel it. 
and, quote, nobody ever got in trouble for feeling it. And he gives a specific example. He says, listen, if you have feelings of cheating on your spouse, you look at somebody, and he used a word that I'm not going to use here, but he says, you know, you have feelings that you want to do something with that person. He says, it's okay to feel it, just don't act upon it. But friends, it most definitively is not okay to feel those things. And we have that on the authority of scripture and on Jesus of Jesus himself. And so let's look at Matthew chapter five, uh, starting in verses 27 and 28. He says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So Mike Todd basically is saying, listen, you, you might want to commit adultery, but as long, as long as you don't act upon it, it's not sinning. And Jesus says, listen, if you didn't act upon it, but you felt that lust in your heart, you've already committed the adultery. It has already taken place. And listen to how Jesus continues in this section, showing how serious it is for someone to, to feel it and how uh, proactive you should be in fighting against it. In verse 29, he says, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. So Jesus is like, if you're feeling that temptation, you need to do away with it right now. Now, we're not going to deny, friends, the fact that people have sinful feelings and inclinations and desires, and you want to respond in a wrong way. But when you tell somebody it's okay to feel it, you are ignoring what Jesus says. And that if you're thinking about doing those things in your mind, you've all, it's like you've already committed the sin. And he is saying, you need to be very, very, very aggressive in combating it and dealing with that sin. I would also like to point out friends when he's like, Hey, listen, feel it. Think about it. Just don't act upon it. Friends, how do you think you end up acting upon it? Does it normally just randomly happen? Or did you think about doing that thing in the first place? The more that you think and dwell upon doing that potential act, the more likely you are to actually end up doing it. So as I've already acknowledged, yeah, he's telling people not to do it, but he's still encouraging them to do sinful things. And he's encouraging them to do the things that lead to them doing it. So he's telling them not to do it, but he's basically giving them the tools to do it. And so it's, it's really, really concerning here. I would also like to point out just a couple of more uh, verses here. So Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 and 26, Jesus pronouncing his woes to the Pharisees. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Indulge, you blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside also may be clean. So what is he saying? He's saying, your thoughts and your intentions, what's going on on the inside, it absolutely matters, and you need to clean that up. And last one here, and this is why it's a really big problem for Mike Todd to be teaching these things. Because again, when you tell people it's okay to feel it, no, depending on what they're feeling, it's very, very sinful. So he is in some ways encouraging that sin. Listen to Mark chapter nine, verse 42. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. So this is a really dangerous, dangerous and problematic teaching. I also would like to point out two other things. Number one is at some point he said, God would not have given you the feelings if he did not expect you to feel it. Friends, I mean, what is stopping him from saying, God would not have given you the ability to sin if he didn't want you to sin. Just because you have the ability to do something doesn't mean that God wants you or expects you to do it. You know, God would not have given you the ability to commit murder if he didn't want you to go out and do it. Absolutely not. Friends, just because you can feel the feelings doesn't mean that God is okay with you feeling whatever feelings you want. You have to submit those emotions and those feelings to God. And so Mike Todd is basically saying submit the action to God, but no, we have to go even further. The desire, the feeling itself, we must submit to God. Number two, it also really bothers me that Mike Todd just consistently takes the Lord's name in vain and does so very casually throughout his service. So that's a big problem as well. All right, we have one more clip to get to. And I think we're going to see some of the same happening in this second clip. He'll say some things that are really good, but he'll kind of undermine the good things that he has said with some of the other things that he says. So let's go ahead and check it out. 
God's already decided some stuff that we think we have, can have an opinion on. I, I'm trying to decide right now, Cordell, how much I'm going to get him to try to... God decided male and female. I, no, no, no. I'm not. This is not a bad. I need y'all to hear my heart on this. This is not a bashing. This is not. A, he. If I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a like a little maybe if somebody. Well, I was born like this. I don't know how I feel. That I, I feel you. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. In culture, you can make up whatever you want to. In culture, you can build whatever you want to. But it's the truth of the matter is that if we are going to submit under what the king says, I'm going to have to wrestle with what I don't even fully understand. Oh, God, the pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I know, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. No, I'm serious. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know. But I do know in the kingdom. They're going to cancel me. It, in the I'm not the king. I don't, I don't know why he decided to do it like this. I don't know why you're wrestling like that, and I don't know what to do to help you but to stand with you and pray with you, and, not, and you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title. Transformation. You can be here. Oh, God. You're what? You're loved here? I want you here. Will I marry you? I, I can't. Not because I don't think you found love. Just as a kingdom ambassador, when I look back, at the orders that are in the constitution of the kingdom. I know people don't talk like this because they want it to be black and white, but there's some things on this earth I don't have the answers to. And so when I don't know, I just default. I come sub to the mission. Okay, so to be honest with you guys, that clip was a little bit confusing to me. And the reason that I say it was confusing is because it seems like to me on one hand, Mike Todd is saying or at least inferring some things that would be biblical. So it seems like he is saying that God created two genders, male and female, and those are the only two genders. And it seems to me like he is saying that homosexual marriage would be wrong and that would be very correct friends like those are biblical statements if that is what he is saying but where i get confused is at the same time that he seems to be saying those things he is also saying things like you know these issues are a little bit more confusing and it's hard for us to be certain he says i don't know I wish God would have made it more clear. So he seems to be insinuating that on these issues, it's not abundantly clear and that he's not sure. And at one point he even says something to the effect of like pastors like being dogmatic and, and seeming like they know with certainty. And he and he's like, sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. Well, friends, I, I think as Christians in general, we should only be dogmatic when it is crystal clear that that is what is being taught. In fact, maybe you've heard this saying, it's something that I try to use when I have opportunities to teach the Bible. You, you know, It says, be firm where the Bible is firm and be soft where the Bible is soft. So if something is just abundantly clear in scripture, like Jesus is the only way of salvation, okay, like be very, very firm 
on that. But if it's an issue where it's not as crystal clear, then yes, you might say, hey, this is this is what I see. This is uh, some these are some different takes on it. But I'm going to I'm not going to put my foot down and say this is the way it must be. Friends, the problem here is that it is crystal clear in Scripture about the issue of uh, genders and about the issue of homosexuality. It is very clear. So while Mike Todd seems to be giving the right answer, he also makes it seem like the Bible is not crystal clear on these issues. And uh, I am concerned that it would maybe give somebody an open door to say, well, he's not certain that he's right. So maybe he's wrong and maybe I can believe something else. And at the end, he did something uh, of the clip that was very similar. He he was addressing the issue of a, a gay couple coming to him and asking him to marry them. And he made it sound like he would have to say no, that he could not do it, which is which is good. But at the same time, he, he also said, when I don't know, I come sub to the mission. So he seems to be saying, like, when I don't know what's going on, I just submit myself to what God says. But friends, I want you to think about how contradictory those two statements are. He just said, when I don't know something, I just do what God tells me to do. But you just said that you don't know. So how do you know what God told you to do? Because you said that God didn't make it clear enough. So it's like, on one hand, he's like, I, he seems to be saying like, I know that God's word is telling me that I can't do this. But at the same time, I'm not really sure. And it's like, it's contradictory. And so um, I, I want to say that I appreciate Mike Todd's heart in that he wants to reach uh, that community. And that's good, friends. As Christians, we should have a desire to reach all people because ultimately we're all sinners. Like we all need the saving work of Christ. So I appreciate his heart in that. But I want you to see that the answer to reaching people is not tiptoeing around the issues and uh, not calling things as they actually are. The most loving thing that we can do is confront people with the issue of sin. And yes, all sins, like people need to know in general, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And then we want to point them to Christ and what he has accomplished on behalf of sinners that people will repent and put their faith in him. And so we are absolutely uh, coming around and we're telling, listen, all people, myself included, like we're sinners. We need the saving work of Christ, but here's the good news. Christ died and bled for you. Place your trust in him. But now you must, you need to repent. You need to turn away from that sinful lifestyle. And so this seems really, really wishy-washy to me. It's like, hey, don't sin, but also I'm not certain if it's sin, but I, I think it's not, you know, it's like, he's not really clear in delivering the message to people. And I, I also think it is somewhat problematic when you start telling people, and, and this is really common in our culture, and I kind of want to push against it a little bit. When you start telling people like, hey, you're welcome here, you're welcome here, you're welcome here. Um, it depends on what you mean by that. And, and, and I want you to hear what I am saying here. Anybody at all, is welcome to hear the gospel message. Uh, the gospel message is for all people. It's for anybody who would repent and trust in Christ whatsoever. But not everybody is welcome to come and enjoy the fellowship of a local church congregation if they are living in intentional willful sin. And so, yes, no matter what your sin is, we all have them, right? Um, I would very much share the gospel with you and would love for you to come hear the message, but you cannot be a part of our local congregation if you are going to intentionally live uh, in sin and not repent of that sin and turn to Christ. And so, uh, again, that takes some nuance. Uh, so I'm happy for anybody. If you listen to this channel, I don't care what your sin is in terms of you hearing the gospel message, but know that if you really want to follow Christ, if you truly are trusting and believing in his finished work, it will result in you turning away from your sinful lifestyle. That does not mean that you will never sin again, but it does mean that you absolutely will fight against it, that you won't just say, well, this is my sin. You know, God must have made me this way. Um, you know, God made me a liar. So I, I guess I just have to keep lying. No friends fight against that. We must fight that temptation. And so, um, you know, this is just one more example, friends, of Mike Todd and the problems with his teaching. I have an entire playlist, so it's not just this one sermon or this one instance that I am pointing out. Unfortunately, 
He has proven uh, numerous times over that he does not correctly understand God's word, nor does he rightly convey it to other people. And as such, friends, he is to be avoided in the sense of us listening to his ministry and us following him because he's not pointing us to what the Bible actually says. He's not giving us the tools that we need to grow in holiness and to live a life that is honoring to God. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this video is helpful to you. If it is helpful and you want to help get this content out to more people on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, God bless.